Thank you for your, everyone for your patience. We'll get ready to get started in just a bit. So we'll get started when everyone is, uh, when we're ready. You all good? Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Good afternoon. My name is Florence Lowe. I am the president of North American Manipur Tribal Association. Welcome. I'd like to thank all of you who have taken the time to come and learn about the crisis being faced by the Kuki Zomi Mar people of Manipur in India. First, I'd like to thank Congresswoman Nancy Mace for helping us get this room. I am a member of the Paite tribe, which is one of the tribes that falls under the Kukizomi Mar umbrella. We are a people that can trace our lineage back 29 generations through our oral traditions to a common ancestor named Zo, Z-O. We are a people with lands that straddle the border of India and Myanmar. Our tribes have lived in these lands since well before the, well, since forever. Uh, adopting Christianity in the mid 1800s through the influence of the British civil servants that were tasked with administering the Northeast of India. Our tribes and our culture, cultures are distinct, distinctly different from the rest of India and our inclusion in the modern country of India is an accident of the ambition of the British in bringing this Southeast region of Asia spanning current Pakistan to Myanmar under one administrative rule. Our tribal chiefs contributed labor for World War I efforts, troops for World War II, and it was in Manipur and our neighboring state of Nagaland that the Japanese were routed during World War II by American, British, and Indian troops. I belong to the Guitic clan, one of the storied clans of our tribes, which established many villages, both in India and in Myanmar. My great-grandfather was the chief of a village, Loibual, which is in Manipur in India. In modern times, I come from a family of civil servants. My father, the late Thangzabang Guite, was an Indian police service officer of the Uttar Pradesh Kader, who retired as joint director of the Intelligence Bureau. After he retired, he was appointed by the governor of Manipur to be the chairman of the Manipur Public Service Commission. My mother was a teacher. My brother is a Manipur police service officer. My sister works at the Indian equivalent of the Reserve Bank, of the Federal Reserve. I married into an American family of Navy and Army veterans. My husband is a fire marshal at the Dallas Fire Department, and I teach at the University of Texas in Dallas. I'm also a technology entrepreneur working with K through 12 schools on data analytics, and I would much rather be talking about technology and innovation. However, when 365 days have gone by without anything of substance being done to help my mother, who is still homeless after all this time, I cannot but step up and speak on her behalf and on behalf of so many others who cannot. This is my family in December of 2022. My mother is surrounded for the first time in many years after COVID with all her grandchildren. A, a portrait of my father is behind all of us and my, and this is in the living room of the home that was burnt on May 3rd, 2003. When my family fled their home on that day, during a lull in the violence that had entered their neighborhood, they sheltered with a Hindu neighbor who himself had to confront the rabid mob of vigilantes and lie to them that there was no one hiding in his dirty shed. My nieces and nephews hiding in that shed were only, uh, I'd like to play this video real quick of the burning of the church behind our house, the church where my family worships.
that was a gas tank of a car bursting into flames. That shed that you see in this video, behind that shed is where my family home is. At the time this, the church was being burned, my, my, my family was in hiding uh, in their living room, thinking that the mob would be satisfied with burning the church. But then they realized that the mob was coming towards their house. Just six months ago, before this, in December of 2025, um, my husband and I and our son were in uh, Imphal. Don't worry, it's not long. That very enthusiastic boy is one of my nephews. My nieces and nephews were hiding in that shed, in a shed. Uh, they were 13 years old, the five-year-old twins that you see here, girl and boy, and the two-year-old boy. Um, we're very aware of how much worse that night could have gone for us. Uh, and it did for so many others um, on that night and in the days and nights following. The vigilantes that had attacked our neighborhood started with burning the church. My brother and his wife there were married in this church. That pulpit that you see behind them was designed by my father and donated to the church. Um, every piece of furniture within that church was burned by that mob that night. I have, well, this is my nephew. This is a video of that same church that we saw in the distance being burned on the inside. No fucking open! Here we come! We are the genius people! We're gonna fuck you up! But I started telling you about my family's experience by telling you who sheltered them. A neighbor who's a Hindu person there is a clear religious aspect to this attack on my family. However, the problem, in my opinion, is not religion, certainly not Hinduism, which is an ancient and tolerant religion. There are good and bad people in every religion, country, and tribe. We need the good people of every religion, country, and tribe to stand up for what is right, to stand up for law and order, to stand up for fairness and justice applied proactively and equally. When people ask me about the history behind the violence, my heart sinks because it is often right after I've told them about what happened to my family, my 77 year old mother and those little children. So inside me, I'm left wondering, what did I leave out in my, in my tale that people look to try to rationalize and explain what happened? Did I not just tell them that I'm, my mother, sister-in-law and nieces and nephews were hiding in a neighbor's shed while a violent mob burned their house and came back the next day and looted the house when someone is in pain, a word of sympathy would not be amiss in, as a first reaction. There is no reason or explanation that excuses what happened. Uh, there is no reason, reason to victim blame. I am not an expert, nor I, do I desire to be, on the socioeconomic uh, political issues of Manipur, India. All I am is a daughter, a sister, and aunt of a family and a tribe to whom a grave injustice was done. In just a few days, it will be Mother's Day. I won't see my mother this year. And in fact, I don't know when I will see her again. I don't know when I will go to India. I don't know that the government of India wouldn't try to re arrest or detain me for the little I have done to try and shed light to this situation, if I did land in Delhi airport. For my efforts and that of my fellow founders and um, board members, I, we, have been excoriated on the internet. A page dedicated on a so-called disinformation website to our fledgling nonprofit using lies and half-truths to paint us as enemies of India, colluding with whoever they consider the enemy. American and Indian YouTube influencers making, are making fun of and denouncing our efforts. Shame on you. God forbid what happened to us happens to you. I would not wish that on my worst enemy. I don't know if I will be safe if I go to Manipur, 
Would the U.S. Marines come to rescue me if the militants took me hostage or worse? Will my young son ever know more about his mother's home country? What is clear is that if I did go to India and I'm not arrested or detained, I will have to tack on an additional 15 hours. To the 24 hours, I will already have traveled from Dallas to Delhi. To take a car on a hilly, sometimes rough back roads, to travel through areas that are safe for tribal Christian people of Manipur. That is a high tax to pay just for an accident of birth and just for being a family that happened to have a home in a neighborhood that a misguided mob decided was the wrong kind of family. We are a small people. Our people are poor, not wealthy, under-resourced, under, uh, underdeveloped, and we do not have friends in high places. The people of Manipur that attacked us, the Meite people, some of whom have been brainwashed into thinking of us as the enemy by some regular people who used social media and some of their leaders, some just behaving irresponsibly and some with true malevolent ill intent, fanning the flames of the worst instincts of the liars and instigators online. This might not be as harmful if our people were equally matched in power and wealth and resources. Unfortunately, because of years of injustice, the Methi people, to their credit, have achieved a lot more than my people and are in positions of power in both legislative and administrative branches. As such, the group think that has infected the worst instincts of the people has led to words and actions that are extremely pre pre prejudicial and directly very harmful to my people. There are hard problems in this world and certainly hard problems that face India, Manipur, and the people of my tribes and our neighbors. These pre problems need to be solved slowly, judiciously, wisely, and by working together. But justice cannot be delayed. Law and order problems should not be ignored and sacrificed because there are big problems. Ignoring problems only lead to creating bigger problems. Today, you will hear from my fellow board members of NAMTA, Lian Gangte of Vancouver and Yang Hangzhou of California. Yang's mother and Lian's uh, father, both in the 80s, were also dispossessed of their homes in May of last year and continue to be internally displaced persons, IDP, a UN term that I have since bitterly become familiar with. Sometimes it is hard to believe that the victims themselves, maybe we are biased, who are these people after all? So we have asked a few experts in the field to come and speak to you as well. Uh, before I ask one of them to come and speak, we have a, um, a message from Congressman Adriano Espiat, which I will play now. If you'll give me a minute. Hello, I'm Congressman Adriano Spayan. Violations of human rights and injustice must never be tolerated. To our friends at the International Defense Council, thank you for your tireless efforts to shine light on these atrocities and to work to end this abuse. I stand in compassion with all who are suffering in Manipur, India, especially the Kuke Subrimar community. We stand with you and are always committed to defending your human rights, protecting indigenous tribes, and reaffirming tolerance and support of religious freedoms once and for all. Thank you in solidarity to keep the faith. Thank you to the congressman.